Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and today I will be taking the weapon concept created by Omer John in last week's video and creating a basic base mesh in Blender. So my goal today isn't to fully detail the model as Omer John will be sketching over my renders and kind of fine tuning the design in the next video. So let's get started. Before I started the design, I decided to outline all of the main big shapes of the weapon to kind of get a good idea of how to approach the design. Because at first glance, the gun looks very detailed and overwhelming, but if we kind of break it down into smaller parts, it doesn't seem as complicated. I also outlined in green what I wanted to design in Photoshop as a vector shape. So yeah, starting off, I set up some reference planes, one front view, side view, and top view. These sketches were all made by Omer John in the previous video, so if you haven't watched that, I'd highly recommend doing so. If you want to learn how I set up these reference planes in Blender, just follow the quick tips video on the screen. After setting up the references, I added in just a basic block to make sure that all of the reference planes were aligned correctly. I then went ahead and added in the SVG vector shapes based on the outlines in the previous slide. If you want to understand which technique I used, just follow the quick tips video on screen. I know I could probably model all of these shapes manually, but I thought this would be quicker for me since I'm primarily a 2D artist, so drawing up all these shapes is just a whole lot faster. Some of these shapes were pretty intricate, like the whole sextant bit, so this method actually saved me a ton of time. If you're wondering what that little reference square on the right side of the screen is, it's called PureRef. It's an awesome application which allows you to just drop in as many references as you want, and it's very non-obstructive and you can kind of move in, zoom out, and yeah, you don't have to have everything on like a separate screen. You can just have it all in one space. It's incredibly helpful. I'll link it down in the description below if you want to download it. I'm fairly new to Blender and 3D modeling in general, so my workflow might not be the most streamlined and efficient, but hey, just like you guys, I'm still in the process of learning. Uh, my goal isn't to become the greatest 3D artist. Instead, I kind of see 3D as just another tool in my tool bag when creating illustrations, which ultimately is my main objective. So please don't roast me in the comments. As you can see, I'm blocking out all of the main shapes and trying to get the placement right based on the orthographic views. Luckily, Omerjah measured out everything in the previous stage, so this process is fairly quick and easy. I know I'm personally kind of a perfectionist and like to jump into detail quickly, but since we're blocking out just all the basic shapes in this video, detail is not a priority. I want to leave Omerjan a lot of creative freedom in the next part, so he'll be adding all of those juicy details then. I need to kind of remind myself uh, this is a collaboration and more often than not in studios you'll be working with a bunch of people so it's best not to get carried away and ask for feedback often. The amazing thing about Blender and its increasing popularity now is the massive amounts of tutorials out there, which I've been almost binging. I'm actually having tons of fun learning about all the new ways to kind of incorporate 3D into my workflow, and I hope to eventually show you everything I learn. That's actually what our goal with this channel is, uh, teaching either 3D artists about how to go about creating your own designs in 2D or teaching 2D artists how you can kind of incorporate 3D into your workflow and how helpful 3D can actually be. 
it doesn't have to be like a separate thing. And I think learning both skills is incredibly important to any 2D or 3D artists out there. As you can see from the drop down menus on the right side, I have a bunch of add ons I've installed. I'll link to the separate add ons I use in the description if you want to use them yourself. Um, most of these are free and really help speed up my workflow. The one I'm mainly using for this video is called JMesh, which is developed by JM, who's an absolute beast when it comes to developing stuff for the Blender community. In this add-on, you can easily add tubes, cables, work with booleans, and so on. I'll link to his channel in the description below. Definitely check it out. Ugh, I get super finicky in this part because I just could not get that cable right. I was so frustrating, but eventually I did get there. Sorry, it's probably horrible to watch. So back to the model, as you can see, I'm kind of getting close to having all of the major shapes down. There are a few unclear areas I wasn't quite sure about, like the handle area in the end, uh, since we mainly see just like a side view, I wasn't quite sure how the handle would look exactly, because it was kind of getting blocked by that sextant shape. And instead of asking Omar John, I'm kind of just going to leave it as it is and just let him kind of figure it out in the next part. Again, as seen previously, I'm kind of using the vector shapes I made in Photoshop and kind of creating base meshes based on them. This valve especially was kind of intricate and I think if I were to kind of make it into a mesh, like it would just take me much, much longer. So this way of working just kind of speeds up my workflow by quite a bit. almost at the end now just kind of adding cables and adding like all the small kind of extra details this is kind of the workflow i like to use when working with 3d kind of starting with the big shapes and then medium shapes and then working in those smaller shapes in the final stage I'm using a tool where I'm creating basic shapes and kind of cutting into other shapes with it. Uh, this is called a boolean and it's a modifier found in the modifier panel. I plan to make a video about this, like a quick tips video, how I use like booleans in my process, so stay tuned for that. Now this happens sometimes, but I managed to actually accidentally delete part of my mesh, like that top lid for the container. Um, so I kind of had to redo that part. It's a bit frustrating, but you know, it happens sometimes.
Just a thing to know, like you can see, maybe some parts of my mesh is a bit messed up. <laughs> But I don't really care about that too much because really all I want in the end is just a nice render. So maybe if the geometry isn't quite there, like it's fine. It's not going to go into a game engine or anything like that. So. And here we are, the basic base mesh for the jellyfire is complete. I plan to sculpt the jellyfish separately and maybe release that as a bonus video or include it in the next stage. We'll see. As for now, I think this is a good base and I'll be sending these renders over to Omar John. In the next video, he'll be sketching over my base mesh and really getting into detailed territory. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video, part two of the Jellyfire episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.